So we're going to be recording uh, on this computer. Let me get back to the very beginning. As you know, test two is going to be Thursday and Friday. And these are some of the things we're going to be talking about to get ready. You really need to understand what the derivative is. In fact, uh, if you've been doing the homework, you've done a lot of calculated a lot of derivatives. And uh, the derivative is the rate of change of a function f of x at a given value of x, or t. And it's t if it's a function of time. We also call it the instantaneous rate of change. That's just like if you were driving down the road, looking at your speedometer, uh, speeding up and slowing down your speedometer tells you the instantaneous rate of change at that time or at that point. The mathematical definition of the derivative is given by this, and I know you've seen it, it's the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. It's also called the slope of the tangent line at a given point. And notice it is not the average rate of change, like averaging your average, finding out your average speed at, if you drove 100 miles and calculated the time, dividing those two would give you the average rate of change. The, the derivative is not the average rate of change, it's the instantaneous rate of change. Now, for the test, you're gonna to need to know how to calculate the derivative of a variety of function, uh, functions. You're going to be able to use the attached sheet, uh, which is a differentiation table. Uh, I'll show that to you in a minute. It'll be attached to the test. If you're taking the test on ProctorU, uh, Tanya Plummer is coming in. Let me let her in. Tanya, are you in? I can't see the screen because I've got uh, this up. Tammy, are you there? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. We've already started. If, uh, as I was saying, if you're going to take it on part to you, uh, print out a copy of it and take you with you to the test. One of the things you need to understand when you're calculating the derivative of a power of X, you should write X in the numerator before uh, applying the formula for the derivative. In other words, if uh, you're trying to keep the derivative of one over X cubed, you need to write that as X to the minus three to use the power uh, function. I'm sure you already know if you have Y equal like X to the sixth power, the derivative is going to be six times X to the six minus one, which is six X to the fifth. But if you see DDX, a one over uh, X to the fourth, rewrite that as DDX of X to the minus four. And then you'll use the power rule, which makes that minus four X to the minus five, which you can then rewrite as minus four over X to the fifth. Continuing, we're going to look at these in a second, but you need to know how to use the product rule, the quotient rule, and the chain rule. Um, 
in regards to the chain rule, when you take the derivative of a composite function and a composite function would be a function that obviously has several functions inside it. Be sure that you have considered every function involved and use the chain rule. You must include the derivative of every function that you see. For instance, uh, look at this. We have y equal x cubed plus ln of x plus sine square of x all to the fifth power. Now this is a pretty complicated uh, function. If you were to multiply this out five times, you would be here to the end of the day probably, and then trying to take the derivative. But the power, uh, the you can use a combination of the power rule and the chain rule, and you would just pretend that that was a U and go five U to the five minus one is the first part, but you can't stop there. You now have to direct, multiply by the derivative of the inner function U, which is DDX of X cubed plus LN of X plus sine square of X. So we continue with this first piece and take the derivative of the inner function, which is three X square, the derivative of L and X, as you know, is one over X. And then we have a sine squared X we need to take the derivative of. That sine of X squared, so it, the derivative will be two times sine of X but we're not finished because we need to multiply by the derivative of sine of X, which is cosine of X. So derivative of sine squared of X is two sine of X cosine of X. And so this is the answer. Another very important thing to remember is that if S of T is an object's position, the derivative S prime is the velocity and the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity, which is the second derivative of the position. You need to understand an object's movement. It's moving forward or going up when the velocity is zero. It's moving backwards or coming down when the velocity is zero. Now you need to also understand implicit differentiation. And this means you may have an expression like y squared plus x squared plus 2xy uh, minus y equals zero. And you want to find dy dx. We will use implicit differentiation and we'll work a couple of problems. Um, you also need to understand how to calculate related rates. And that's when you may have uh, something like a circle with a radius of R. And it has an area, which is pi R square. And you want to calculate, suppose, R is changing. In other words, you may be given dr dt. The radius is changing uh, at a certain rate, say maybe 10, and you want to find dA dt. So you write dA dt is d dt a power of square. Well, look at this. You don't see a T there, do you? You see an R square. So first you take the derivative with respect to R, which is two pi R and multiply by dr dt. That's the chain rule.
And then finally, number 11, you need to be able to interpret the derivative or the slope of a graph at a given point, whether it's plus or minus or zero. I think you know how to do that. Here are the differentiation rules. We're not going to go over every one of them because I'm sure you've already used it. But this will be attached to your test, as will the uh, unit circle be attached. Now, let's talk about these rules again. I'm sure you've already used the sum rule, which says if you're taking the derivative of the sum of two functions, it's simply the derivative of each individual function added together. The difference rule, if you're taking the derivative of the difference of two functions, it's just the difference of the individual derivatives. And then there's the constant multiple rule, which says if you're taking the derivative of some constant k times f of x, the derivative is going to be just that constant times the derivative of the function. And then finally, the constant rule, if you've got a function that's a constant k, its derivative is going to be zero. The slope of that tangent line would be zero. Now, we've got three other rules here. The product rule says if you want to take the derivative of the product of two functions, it's going to be the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. I think that's pretty easy to remember, although you'll have this with you on the test. Now, the quotient rule is a little bit different, and instead of using uh, the terms numerator and denominator, I like to say bottom and top because it doesn't take as long to say it. So if you want to take the derivative of u divided by v, it's going to be the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Don't forget to divide by v squared. So that's a quotient rule. Now, the chain rule says that if y is some function of u and u is some function of x called g of x, then dy dx is going to be, first of all, calculating dy du and multiplying by du dx. And uh, let me just illustrate that. We've already done it a couple of times. If, um, if y equals uh, sine of x cubed plus x, Notice we've got a sine function and we've got x cubed plus x, which is a polynomial. So we got two fu functions that we need to uh, take into account when we take the derivative. Now we can call this u and you don't have to do this all the time. You can write that as sine of u where u is equal to x cubed plus x. So dy dx equals dy du times du dx. Now, dy du is the derivative of sine of u, which is cosine of u. du dx is 3x squared plus 1. Now remember u is x cubed plus x. And 
So the answer is this, and you don't have to write down you every time. You can just look at this and say, well, that sign of X cubed plus X, I'm going to pretend that this is, that the derivative then would be cosine of X cubed plus X, but I can't forget to take the derivative of the U, which is three X squared plus one. Okay. Is everybody seeing this okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, here is a function and it sort of relates to what we've been going through in the pandemic. This particular graph depicts a number of, of virus cases C at a time T weeks after the deadly virus appeared in a country. What does C prime of eight mean? Now, look at this function. It's a function of time and weeks since the virus appearance. At the very beginning of time, there was no, there were no cases. And this is actually the way the virus has worked over the last year. And it's a little more complicated than this because it can appear say and and in, in, uh, one area and then appear in another area later uh, so it's you have this happening in various spots but basically as a virus begins to spread it increases pretty much exponentially it keeps on increasing and finally it reaches a point where the slope is not quite as much and it flattens out and that's when it reaches all the population or either we have mitigated the virus to keep it from spreading. So now the question is what does C prime at eight mean? In other words, at eight, let me erase a little bit of this. So we can see C prime at eight would be whatever the slope is at this point. And I'm writing a, or, or drawing a very crude tangent line there. C prime of eight would be, does anybody know the answer to that? The rate of change at week eight. Exactly right. The rate of change of cases per week at t equal to eight. It is not the average number of cases after eight weeks. It's not the average rate of change over eight weeks. It's not the number of cases at t equal eight. It's the rate of change of cases at t equal eight or we or the or week eight. Okay. You really need to understand what a derivative means. Now we're going to stop, start and work some problems. First of all, does anybody have any big X outstanding questions? Not right now, no. Okay. If anybody uh, develops some questions uh, between now and the test, just email them to me. And if, and if anything seems to stump you, just let me know. Okay, so we're going to work through a number of problems here. Um, we got an object dropped from the top of a cliff, uh, 660 meters high, and the height above the ground is given by this function. We could call this at S equals 660 minus 4.9 T squared determine its speed eight seconds after it is dropped. Okay. Well, the speed, and remember this, is equal to the absolute value of the velocity. In other words, the speed is always going to be positive. Uh, your velocity could be positive, means you're going up, 
are negative means you're going down. And notice the velocity here is going to be S prime, which is going to be minus uh, 9.8 T. And it asks you to find the speed uh, at eight seconds. So V at eight is going to be minus 9.8 times eight, which is equal to minus 78.4 meters per second. Now that's a velocity, so the speed is equal to absolute value of the velocity, which is 78.4. And that's the answer there. Now, differentiate the function and find the slope of the tangent line uh, at the given value of the independent value of variable. We need to look at this function, calculate the derivative, and, and then calculate it at the point x equals 7, which will be the slope of the tangent line. Well, I, the first thing I would do is to rewrite this as 4x plus 5x to the minus 1. In other words, if you have x in the denominator or x squared or x cubed, you need to rewrite it so that the exponent is in the numerator. So um, now we can take the derivative the derivative of 4x is just 4. By the way, anytime you see a linear function like uh, kx, the derivative is just going to be the slope of that line. OK? So, um, And of course, that follows a rule, right? 4x to the 1 power, the derivative would be 1 times 4x to the 1 minus 1, which is 0. x to the 0 is 1, so it would be 4. Now, for the second piece, we have minus 5x to the minus 2. And that is 4 minus 5 <clears throat> over x squared and calculate f prime at 7. It's just 4 minus 5 over 7 squared, which you can do the math, turns out to be uh, oh, 4 minus 5 over 49 is equal to 196 minus 5 over 49 equals 191 over 49. So that's the answer to that. <clears throat> now here is just a polynomial. You can do this pretty much in your head. Y prime is going to be four times the five, which is 20 X cubed. For this part, we're going to three times the five, which is 15 X square. And the derivative of a constant is zero. So the answer here, 20 X cubed plus 15 X square. Now, if you see one you already know the answer to or, or know how to do and don't want to hear how to do it again, just let me know. We'll go to the next one. We've got a lot of problems here. Now, here again, what are you going to do, folks? Rewrite. Absolutely. And by the way, don't, don't just leave the 13 down there. 
That's one thirteenth x to the minus two. And leave the nine down there. It's, it's still one ninth. That's a constant, right? Times x to the minus one. So now the derivative. By the way, I can also write that as dy dx. They mean the same thing is equal to minus two x to the minus three over 13 minus one times x to the minus two over nine. And generally, you, this is a good answer. You could actually put that in your calculator. But usually the mathematicians like you to bring it down to the denominator and make it x cubed and then minus one ninth, one over nine x square. And that's this answer. Now, here we have a quotient. Now, I want to warn you or, or just tell you, you don't always have to use the quotient rule. Okay, sometimes if you just have a single term down here, uh, a polynomial over a polynomial, uh, you can do it the fastest by just breaking it apart like this, 2x to the fourth divided by x squared plus six over x squared. Now you simplify this and make that two x squared plus six x to the minus two. And now you've got it all set up to use the power rule. And so you get dy dx is four x minus 12 x to the minus three, which is four X minus 12 over X cubed. Now notice it asks you to take the second derivative. So that means you get the second derivative which is also y double prime. Just go back to the first derivative and take the derivative of that. And that's going to be four. <clears throat> minus three times minus 12 is 36. X to the minus four. Um, which you rewrite is four plus 36 over x to the fourth. Okay. Okay, now, by the way, if this had been y equal 2x to the fourth plus six over x square plus two x, there's no simple way to do this except to use a quotient rule. So we couldn't use a shortcut that we did by simplify the expression. Now here is a product. And in this particular case, I think I would use a product rule, <coughs> excuse me, except you could multiply it all out and then take the derivative. You could do that to check it. But anyway, product rule, the derivative is gonna be the first, which is two X minus three times the derivative 
of the second. Well, here's the second derivative of that. If it's okay with you, I'm just going to go ahead and put the derivative there, which is five plus the second, which is five X plus one times the derivative of the first, the derivative of the first is two. So now simplifying this, we get 10 X minus 15 plus 10 X plus two equal 20 X minus 13. Okay, the next one is going to be the quotient rule. And there's no simple way to factor anything out of this. You've got to use the quotient rule. And here I'm actually going to write down the, the whole thing in detail. Although in some cases you could just in your head put down the derivative. So the quotient rule I'm going to write down G prime of X is going to be the bottom times the derivative of the top. Now notice I'm just writing this down minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is x squared plus 6x, divided by, and don't forget this, the bottom squared, now notice if you wanted to, you didn't have to write this whole thing down. You could have just said that this is going to be 2x uh, 2x, okay. And you could have calculated the derivative in your head. But in this particular case, I wrote down the whole formula. So now g prime of x is equal to the derivative of x squared plus 5 is 2x. So we'll put 2x times this. and minus x squared plus five times the derivative of x squared plus six x, which is two x plus six. And always remember the bottom squared And now we're not through because of simplification, okay? G prime of X uh, is equal to 2X cubed plus 12X squared. Now we need to FOIL this. So if we FOIL this, we'll get 2X cubed the outside is 6x squared. The inside is 10x. And the last is 30. And notice this is just uh, paying a lot of attention to detail here and not making them, trying to not make a mistake. G prime of x is 2x cubed. Uh, plus 12x squared. Now I need to uh, multiply the negative one times the entire thing. So I get minus 2x cubed minus 6x squared um, minus 10x. By the way, notice 
an error here. This is 10x minus 10x minus 30 divided by the bottom squared And now we can simplify. Notice that two x cubes cancel, uh, and we get twelve x squared minus six x squared is six x squared. And then we have just minus ten x minus thirty over x squared plus six x squared. It's very simple to write it all down, but you've got to be careful at each step that you're simplifying everything correctly and taking the derivative correctly. Now, here's a quotient too, right? It's a quotient, but this is one that only has one term on the bottom and we can rewrite and uh, this is going to be x square over x to the one half. By the way, I'm rewriting the square root of x is x to the one half plus 8x over x to the one half plus 3 over x to the one half. Simplifying that, that's going to be x to the three halves plus x, 8x to the one half plus three x to the minus a half. Now you can use a power rule <clears throat> and you get y prime is three halves x to the three half minus one, which is one half plus one half times eight is four x to the one half minus one is minus one half. And then finally, minus a half times three is gonna be minus three halves. X to the minus one half minus one is minus three halves. Now, notice they have the answer in a particular form here. To get that, you're going to have to factor x, excuse me a second, my drawing went away, factor out x to the minus 3 halves. And when you do that, you get 3x squared plus 8x minus three. You can check this out by multiplying this times this and you'll get this. And uh, then I'm going to bring the minus three halves down and have three X square plus eight X minus three. Uh, Excuse me, there should be a, a, a two here. X to the minus three halves over two. And so we have a two here and X to the three halves. Notice if you were doing this without uh, multiple choice, if you got this, I would count it right. If you got this, I would count it right. So on, on, the, uh, on the test, uh, show your work and you might get part credit.
We want to find the first and second derivative. Does everybody know how to do this one? Do you want to see it again? It's very similar to one of the others. Who wants to see it again? Yeah, I'll, I'll see it again. Okay. It's not really seeing it again. It's got different numbers. Okay. But what you do is rewrite R as one fifth s to the minus four minus eight thirds s to the minus two. Now you can use the power rule and write r prime equals dr ds is equal to minus four times one fifth, which is minus four fifth s to the minus five. And now minus two uh, times minus eight is plus 16 thirds s to the minus three equals minus four over five s to the fifth plus 16 over three s cube. And now we, we're asked to do the second derivative, which is r double prime r d square r dr square, I'm sorry, ds square. Notice this is not dr dx, it's dr ds. Mm -hmm. The variable is s. It's very easy to forget that you, you're working in s and not in x. So now we need to take the derivative again, and we just go back to the way it was uh, with negative exponents and use the power rule. So we get minus five times minus four is 20 over five s to the minus six, and then minus three times 16 uh, thirds. And notice that's going to be minus 16 s to the minus four. So rewriting this 20 divided by five is four divided by s to the six minus 16 over s to the fourth. And that's this answer and this answer. The main idea here is to rewrite and put uh, the uh, exponents up it in the numerator. Okay. Now we're given the position of a body moving as a function of time. And you want to find the body's acceleration each time the velocity is zero. Well, you, you need to remember that the velocity is equal to S prime and the acceleration is equal to V prime, which is equal to the second derivative of S. So we want to find the body's acceleration each time the velocity is zero. So first we need to find at what times the velocity is zero. So we've got to calculate the velocity. So the velocity is equal to S prime is three T squared minus 52 times 27 is 54. The derivative of 240 T is 240. And we want to set that to zero. And the first thing I would do to make it a little easier <clears throat> is to factor three out. And usually these are set up so that you can probably factor it. And it turns out that this can be factored as three times T minus 10, T minus eight. You can foil this to make sure that you've got the right factors. So set that equal to zero. 
So the velocity is zero at t equal 10 and t equal eight. So we want to find the body's acceleration at each of these two times. So the acceleration is V prime will be the derivative of this function. Go back to before we factored it, take the derivative. That derivative is 6t minus 54. So now we can calculate the acceleration at uh, 10, excuse me here, the acceleration at 10 is equal to 6 times 10, which is 60 minus 54 equals 6 meters per second squared. And the acceleration at 8, 8 times 6 is 48 minus 54 is equal to minus 6. So here is the answer here. Okay, how about another quotient rule? By the way, if we, in, a, in an hour and a half, uh, which is about another uh, 40 minutes, if we don't get everything done, every one of these problems has been worked uh, in the sheet I sent you. Okay. I'm just showing you right now the unworked problem and just going through it. Um, so there's no way out except to use the quotient rule. So quotient rule. S prime. It's the bottom. times the derivative of the top. Now I'm going to just go ahead and write the derivative of the top. Okay. In the in the notes I've given you, I actually write down DDT of 2e to the t. The derivative of the top is 2e to the t. Remember the derivative of e to the t is itself. That's the only function whose derivative is itself. So minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the bottom is 2e to the t also. All divided by the bottom squared, which is 2e to the t plus 1 squared. So now, We need to do a little multiplying out. 2e to, e to the t times 2e to the t is 4e to the 2t. You know, e to the t times e to the t is e to the t plus t equal e to the 2t. So you need to remember your algebra. Um, and then 2e to the t times 1 is 2e to the t. And this is minus 4e to the 2t divided by the bottom squared Notice we have a cancellation here and we end up that the derivative is 2e to the t over 2e to the t plus 1 squared. And that is answer b. Okay. Here we 
we have another object moving around or a body moving around on the coordinate line. Its position is S and the variable is time T. Find the body's speed and acceleration at the end of the time interval. So uh, notice we're asked for speed and remember that speed equal absolute value velocity. So the speed is going to have to be uh, positive. Okay. Uh, and uh, the acceleration is going to be the derivative velocity. So the velocity is equal to S prime is the derivative of S and that's minus 3t squared plus 10t minus 5. Um, the velocity at the end of the interval, which is 5, is this going to be minus 3 times 5 squared plus 10 times 5 minus 5. And you add all that up and it's going to be minus 30. So the speed is equal to the absolute value of minus 30 equal 30. Now the acceleration is V prime. So we go back up here and take the derivative of the velocity, which is minus 6t plus 10. So the acceleration at the end of the interval, which is 5, is going to be minus 30 plus 10 equal minus 20. And so we have answer A. Am I going too fast? No, sir. Okay. If you have any question, just stop me. Now, now, we're given an object's position here, by the way, it's a cubic function. Uh, and this is for t more than or equal to zero. You want to know when the object is moving forward. If it's moving forward, v has got to be more than zero. OK, got to remember that. So now we need to calculate the velocity. is equal to 3 times 1 third, which is 1. So it's going to be t squared. Um, 2 times 11 halves, which is 11. So it's minus 11 times t plus 24. And this is the velocity function. Now, what I would do is set this equal to zero. Or you could just graph it like I've graphed it over here. But we want to find out where it's zero. So we factor it. So the velocity is going to be at t equal 3 and t equal 8 is going to be 0. So it's not moving at all. <clears throat> and if you just uh, graph the function, notice it's a parabola that opens up. And so at these points, the velocity is 0. And I'm shading in where it's moving 
forward where the velocity is positive. And so that would be for t between three and zero and t more than eight. Okay. If you wanted to, once you got the velocity, you could just graph it on your calculator. And if you draw a little sketch on your test and say, hey, it's positive here, it's positive here, there is the answer. Okay. Well, we have another object here. Now a ball is dropped from the top of a building and its position is given by S equal 576 minus 16 T square. How long does it take the ball to reach the ground? What's the ball's velocity at the moment of impact? When it's on the ground, when S equals zero on the ground. Obviously, it, <clears throat> how, how tall is this building? Can you tell me? Uh, 576 feet. That's right, because at T equals zero, plug in T equals zero, you get 576. So it's it starts out, you drop the ball at 576 meters up, and you want to know when it hits the ground, you want to know when S equals zero. Well, that turns out to be pretty simple. You just say 576 minus 16 T squared equals zero. So T squared is equal to 576 over 16. Um, is equal to 36. So T is equal to six seconds. So in six seconds, it's going to hit the ground. And we want to know what's the body, the ball's velocity at that moment. So we need to calculate the velocity, which is S prime, which is going to be zero minus 32 T. So the velocity at six seconds is going to be minus 32 times six. It's minus 192 meters per second. And so it hits the ground at six seconds and uh, it's going at minus 192 meters per second. The negative means it's just coming down. Find the derivative. Well, anytime you see a product of two functions, you're probably going to need to use the product rule. So let's write this out. The first is going to be 4x squared, and the second is going to be e to the minus x. By the way, um, d dx of e to the minus x is equal to e to the minus x times derivative of minus x, which is minus 1 is equal to minus e to the minus x. You remember that d dx of e to the x is equal to e to the x, but the derivative of e to the minus x is not itself. It's going to be the negative of e to the minus x. So now let's use the product rule. y prime is the first, which is 4x squared, times the derivative of e to the minus x which is minus e to the minus x plus the second, which is e to the minus x times the derivative of the first, 
which is 8x. So we get minus 4x squared e to the minus x plus 8x e to the minus x. And it looks like they want us to factor out 4x e to the minus x, which leaves you factoring, taking it out of this function that leaves you with 2. And out of this function leaves you minus x. You can check and see that this is in, indeed this function. I think it would have been simply fine to just have written it as e to the minus x times 8x minus 4x squared. That would have been fine too. There are all kinds of ways to write the answer. Okay, now we're getting into derivative of some trig functions mixed in with the product rule. Notice this is a product, this is a product, <clears throat> and this is just the derivative of minus cosine t. So product rule, S prime is a first times the derivative of the second, which is minus sine of t. plus the second, which is cosine of t, times the derivative of uh, the second, which is uh, 3t squared. Uh, and then here, the first, which is minus 8t, times the derivative of the second, which is cosine of t. Um, plus the second, which is sine of t, times the derivative of the first, which is minus eight. And then finally, we have the derivative of minus eight cosine of t. The derivative of cosine of t is minus sine, so it's minus sine times minus eight would be plus eight sine of t. So S prime is minus t cubed sine of t plus 3t squared cosine of t minus 8t cosine of t. And notice the last two cancel. They're the negative of each other. So this is your answer, which is right here. Now, have to remember your algebra here to rewrite this one as, this is the sixth root of x to the fifth. So that's x to the five, six. And this is just x to the five, e. So y prime is gonna be 
the power times the power minus one, which is five, six minus six, six, which will be X to the minus one, six plus the power times the power minus one, which is five A minus one. And notice they didn't decide to bring the, uh, the exponent down to the bottom. So this is the answer. Okay, the next one is going to be the chain rule. And uh, Y prime, we're going to let this be U, but we're going to head and pretend that it's just like X and say the answer is 10 times 5X squared minus 5 over X minus X. To the ninth power but we have to multiply it by ddx of that u. So we get 10 5x squared minus 5 over x minus x to the ninth power. Now, you probably want to rewrite this as minus 5x to the minus 1 when you take the derivative. So the der derivative is going to be the derivative of 5x squared, which is 10x. This derivative is going to be 5x to the minus 2, which is going to be 5 over x squared. Derivative of minus x is minus 1. So there you have it. You've got to take the derivative of every function you see. Turns out my dog just came in here. I think it's lightning outside. He doesn't like lightning. Oh. Preston, my wife has just, just left. So uh, he's, he's probably scared. scared. Yeah. Preston, um, just looking at how much time we've got left. How long can you guys go here? I can go to 545. Okay. I, I think we've got a lot of repet uh, repetition here. Every one of these problems is worked on the notes. Okay. I want to make sure that we get uh, to, um, I'm going to work this problem because it's a one with trig in it. We want to calculate dr d theta. We need to use the chain rule. And notice it's like using the power rule. But we have a U in here, and we need to take the derivative of that also. But the power rule would say go minus 5 times secant theta plus tangent theta to the minus 6 power. 
and multiply by the derivative with respect to theta of secant theta plus tangent theta. So now I'm going to go ahead and put this on the bottom. And take the derivative of secant plus tangent. Well, derivative of secant, if you look in your uh, table, is secant theta, tangent theta. And the derivative of tangent theta is secant squared. And notice that's the answer, but there's a little simplification that can be done. Notice we can factor a secant theta out of here, which leaves tan theta. plus secant theta. And of course, this is the same as this. So we can, we can cancel one of these and make this a five. So the answer is minus five over secant theta plus tangent of theta to the fifth power. Uh, And the secant on top. And a secant on top. Okay. Now, I want to cover implicit differentiation and also um, related rates. So here is an implicit function dealing with x and y and we want to calculate dy dx so what you do is take ddx of both sides when you do this you need to remember all the rules so i'm going to do ddx of xy plus ddx of x plus ddx of y. That's doing this side equals ddx of x square y square. So all I've done is do DDX of, of each side. Now, this is a product. Okay, so that's going to be the first, which is X times DY DX plus the second, which is Y times DDX of X, which is just one. What's ddx of x? Just one. And what is ddx of y? It's just dy dx. Now notice that dy dx is what we're looking for. We need to complete the right side. That's going to be the first times ddx of y squared plus the second, which is y squared, times ddx of, two, of x squared is 2x. Now, I'm going to rewrite some of this. This is going to be x dy dx. This is just 1 times y, which is y, plus 1 
plus dy dx. Now I need to deal with this. Notice, folks, we've got d dx y squared. Well, you don't see any x in the y squared, but we know that y is a function of x. So we have to use the chain rule and take the derivative with respect to y, which is 2y, and multiply it by dy dx. That's the chain rule. And here we have plus 2xy squared. So uh, now let's see if we can, I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit. This is 2x square y dy dx plus 2xy squared. Now we want to collect all the terms with dy dx in them. Okay, I'm going to bring this over here and it'll be minus 2x square y. And then I've got a plus X and a plus one. And all that's multiplied by dy dx. So I've got this over on this side right here. I factored the dy dx out. And so we have this. On the other side, I've got this, which is 2xy squared. And I'm going to take this over there, make it minus y minus 1. And now I can calculate dy dx is equal to 2xy squared minus y minus 1 over minus 2x squared y plus x plus 1. That's a lot of work, okay? But you got to be very careful as you take the derivative of both sides. Any questions? No, sir. Okay. Now, what I want to do Let's do another implicit differentiation. We're going to go to 545, okay? All right. Okay. And we, I think we'll have time to do some uh, related rates. But here is an implicit function. And we want to take ddx of both sides. So it's ddx of x to the fourth plus ddx of y to the fourth equal ddx of 28xy. Now, ddx of x to the fourth is just going to be 4x cubed. ddx of y to the fourth, you don't see an x there. So you take the derivative with respect to y first, which is 4y cubed, and multiply by dy dx, which is the chain rule. Here we've got a little product rule to do. So that's going to be 28 times the first times the derivative of the second, which is dy dx, plus 28 times the second times d dx of x. And of course, that's going to be just one. So now we have 4x cubed plus 4y cubed dy dx plus 
equals 28x dy dx plus 28y. Now we want to collect all our dy dx's on one side and we get um, 4y cubed dy dx minus 28x dy dx equals 28y on that side. And we need to move this, which has no dy dx in it, over to the other side. So now we're ready to factor out dy dx. Gives you 4y cubed minus 28x equals 28y minus 4x cubed. So dy dx is equal to 28y minus 4x cubed over 4y cubed minus 28x. Now we can factor a four out of the top. And a four out of the bottom. And cancel the fours. And we have this answer, seven Y minus X cubed over Y cubed minus seven X. Now, let's do a, one with a logarithm in it. You'll probably remember that ddx of ln of x is equal to 1 over x. So let's take the derivative of this, dy dx, is going to be 6 times 1, 6, which is 1. That's going to be x to the fifth uh, times, excuse me, uh, we have a product here. We have a product here. So it's going to be f first, which is x to the six over six times the derivative of the second, which is one over X plus the second, which is LN of X times the derivative of the first, which is X to the fifth. And then minus derivative of X to the six over six, which is minus X to the fifth over six. And notice this is x to the fifth over six also here. x to the sixth divided by x is x to the fifth. And we're going to have minus x to the fifth over six, which is this. And then we'll have x to the fifth ln of x. So since these cancel out, the answer is x to the fifth ln of x. Okay. Here we have an inverse cosine. But it's not just plain old x. It's got a u here. You remember DDX of inverse cosine of X is equal to minus one over the square root of one minus X square. 
except here we've got a u instead of an x. So dy dx is going to be minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared, which is 3x to the ninth squared times ddx of 3x to the ninth. That's a chain rule. So we have, that's the derivative of this is going to be 27x to the eighth times a minus. So it's going to be minus 28, 27x to the eighth over the square root of 1 minus, now we're going to square everything in here, that's going to be minus 9x to the 18th power. Notice it. Yeah, to the 8th. Notice that x to the 9th squared is equal to x to the 18th. So there is the answer there. I tell you, I want to get to um, working some related rate problems. And I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm also going to take any ones that we don't work and go back and make another little short video of the ones we missed, and we'll put that up too. Okay. Okay. Turns out that I picked a whole lot of problems here. <laughs> we have already covered just about every type you're talking about. Here's a related rate problem. A company knows that the unit costs and unit revenue are from the production and sale of X units are related by this function. Um, so this is a unit cost is equal to the revenue squared divided by 110 squared plus 3725. Find the rate of change of the unit revenue when the unit cost is changing by $15 per unit and the unit revenue is 4,000. So let's write down this function for the unit cost is equal to R squared over 110,000 uh, plus 3725. So we want to calculate DC DX. That would be DDX of R squared over 110,000 plus 3725. Now here's where you got to remember that R is a function of X, but you also have R squared. So DC DX, DDX of R squared over 110 squared, you need to take over 110,000 you have to take the derivative with respect to R, which is two R over 110,000 times dr dx. Now, the derivative of 37.25 with respect to x is 0. So now we have an equation that relates dc dx to dr dx. I want to do this when the revenue is 4,000. And the unit cost is changing at a rate of 15. 
and we want to calculate dr dx. So dc dx is 15. The revenue is 4,000. So that's two times 4,000 divided by 110,000 times DRDX. And let's see if I can make, we want to calculate DRDX. So DRDX is going to be 15 divided by 2 times 4,000 over 110,000. And this is equal to 15 times 110,000. Got to flip it over, divided by 2 times 4,000 which if you multiply this out is $206.25 per unit. Now, derivative here was pretty easy, but you have to remember the chain rule and, and know that R is a function of X. Okay, I'm going to skip this one. I will work it for you. But I'm going to do a related rate problem. The radius of a sphere is increasing at a rate of four millimeters per second. How fast is the volume increasing when the diameter is 80 meters? I mean, 80 millimeters. So first of all, you'll have to know that the volume of sphere, and I would give you this on the quiz, is 4 thirds power cubed. We want to know how fast the volume is increasing. So we want to know dv dt. That's what we want to find when The radius is 40 millimeters. Notice I say the diameter is 80 millimeters. So that would be when the radius would be 40 millimeters. So now let's take dv dt is equal to d dt of 4 thirds power cubed. dv dt is what we want to find. We're taking d dt of 4 thirds pi r cubed. Let me clean this up a little bit. You see no t in r, but we know r is a function of time. So we take the derivative with respect to r first. So that would be 3 times 4 thirds which would be four times pi times three minus one is r squared. But we need to multiply times dr dt, the chain rule. Now we're ready to calculate dv dt. It's four pi when the radius is 40. That would be 40 squared times dr dt we're given is four. Multiply all this out and you get 6,400 pi uh, millimeters cubed. It's, a, it's the rate of change of the volume per second. So the math is pretty simple if you remember the chain rule. Um, I think 
We'll do one last one here. This has to do with an oil spill. We got an oil rig, springs a leak and cotton seeds, the oil spreads in a circular path around the rig. If the radius of the oil spill increases at the rate of 30 me uh, meters per hour, how fast is the area of the patch increasing when the patch has a radius of 100 meters? Well, that this is the oil spill has a radius of R, which is changing as oil pours out. We know that the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. We know that dr dt is given uh, to be 30 meters per hour. And we want to know what da dt is, how fast is the area changing. So we take DDT of both sides, DADT is equal to DDT of pi r squared. So DADT here, we don't see a T, but we have to take the derivative with respect to R first, which would be two times pi times R times dr dt. Now we can plug in 2 pi, the radius, uh, when the radius is 100 meters, and dr dt is 30. And that gives you 6,000 pi meters square meters per hour. So that's uh, a uh, relative rate problem. Um, let's see. I think I'll do one more and that will be it. And I'll work all the rest of them for you. Basically, we have a formula here that says uh, the average weekly cost of ordering and paying for uh, and holding merchandise is A of Q, where Q is a quantity ordered when things run low. Notice if you read this problem, it says that Q is a variable K and M and H are constants. Now you should read this very carefully to know which ones are the constants because the K and the M and the H are, are staying put, they're, they're not changing. So what we need to do is write A of Q. Notice they want the first derivative of A with respect to Q and the second derivative of A with respect to Q. So A of Q, we're going to rewrite as KM times Q to the minus one. plus CM plus H over two times Q. Now Q is the only thing that's changing in this equation. And then we want to take DA DQ. We'll use a power rule here. That would be minus KM Q to the minus two. The derivative of C times M, which is a constant, is zero. And the derivative of H over two times Q is just H over two. The second derivative with respect to Q 
we just use this uh, equation here. It's going to be minus 2 times minus km, which is going to be 2km q to the minus 3. h over 2 is just a constant. So the second derivative is 2km uh, times q to the minus 3, which is 2km over q cubed. The first derivative, notice they put h over 2 first, minus km over q squared. So this has a lot of uh, constants in it, could throw you off if you think there are variables. Here it's very simple, q is the only variable. Okay, that uh, is how far are we going to go? I will put all the others up in a video. And also, I've recorded this one. Anybody have any questions? No, sir. No, sir. OK. Hope you all have a, a good uh, evening. I guess it's about time for Raphael to go to bed, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Thank it's you. midnight almost. <laughs> OK. Well, I'm going okay, to end. Good night. In the conference, I wish you all the best. You can call me anytime, ask me any question. Uh, and uh, we we did probably a few more problems than I should have put in here. That's a lot of problems we looked at. But I will do the, the all the rest of them are already uh, worked in my handwriting. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.